Ooh, welcome back to my t-shirt printers and today it's all about screen separations without a rip in Adobe Illustrator. Let's do this. There are so many options, functions and tools just to end up with the same result. That's why I've got our crack team of designers hey. to simplify this in an easy to follow graph. Wait, 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 wait. Who drew this? We're gonna have to do this on the side. Yes. No, 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 not like that. Let's just start from the beginning. Do you need a degree to do this? No, you don't. It's easier than you think. You do get some of the difficult designs, but you've got to start somewhere. So let's jump right in. First, you're gonna need a keyboard and a mouse. I'm only kidding, kind of not, you're still gonna need them, but anyway. So first I look at the design, I give it a good stare down. This is to establish what is the background and what's the actual part we're going to be printing. Looking at this big gray area all around the graphic over here, you can see that that is gonna be the background or the actual t-shirt color. What I wanna do is take out that background and put it on another layer, so it's out the way. So how do we do this? Easy. Get my pointer tool up first, which is V, and you get this nice little arrow tool here. I now select this big gray background layer just by simply clicking on it, and I'm gonna go Command X to cut that layer or that graphic or that color and put it into my clipboard. I'm gonna head over to my layer palette over here and I'm gonna click down here in the bottom right hand corner and click on create new layer. Now you can see that layer has gone above the artwork layer so what we need to do is drag it underneath the artwork layer and let's just relabel it background. Now since that graphic is in our clipboard I'm just gonna say command B and it pastes itself straight back in. Now to make sure this layer stays out of the way and it doesn't interfere with anything we do, just where this eyeball logo is over here, to the right of that, I'm gonna just click on this toggle lock and it creates a little padlock, which now means if we head on back over to our graphic, we cannot select that layer anymore. We can still select our graphic, which is on our artwork layer, but we can't select that background layer. The next step is to make sure our artwork is CMYK and not RGB. Otherwise, we won't be able to see the screen separations later on. So how can we tell if we've got the correct color mode? It's another easy step. It tells us in the document name right up here, you can see it says RGB. Now we need to change that to CMYK. How do we change this? We just head on over to our file menu over here and we drop down all the way to document color mode and click on CMYK. Now, if you head on back to your file name, you can actually see it says CMYK. It's converted. Next, we start adding in our Pantone or spot colors. Looking at this design, we have got three colors we've got to pull out. It's red, light gray, and black. Not in that order though. Let's pull up our swatches palette by going up to the Windows menu at the top over here. Click on that, go all the way down to where it says swatches. Let's open that up and we get our swatches palette up. So now we go to our swatches menu, which is this little hamburger sign over here. Click on that, drop down to open swatch library, go across, go to color books, go across again, and go all the way down to Pantone solid coated. So click on that one, and you can see we get our Pantone swatch library popped up over here. Now just take note, between your swatches palette and this new Pantone solid coated palette that we just pulled up, is that your Pantone colors have this little triangle in the corner with a little dot in, and these don't have anything. So your standard ones don't have any. We're looking to put replace them with these little ones with these dots in the corner. Right, so let's select some colors here for our design. So you can see we've got a red, we've got this light gray color, and we've got a black. So first of all, easy peasy, we just say black. Let's just double click that, it adds to it. And this red one over here, let's just click on that red and a nice, let's make it a nice warm gray. So for instance, I'm just gonna type in warm and you can see we've got a selection of nice warm grays we come up here. So I'm just gonna select the first one and pop it in there. Now, what I always do, I always put like a little bit of a wild color in here so I can see to make sure that when we're changing our colors, we're changing all the colors. So I'm just gonna select this crazy green color over here and pop that in there. We're done with this solid coated menu option now. Let's close it down. So what's the reason for this wild green color that we've chosen? Well, sometimes our crack team of designers don't always use the same shades of color. So you end up with two reds instead of one. For example, let's start off with the red. So the first thing to do is to get your direct selection tool, which is A, and you can see my little cursor here has changed to a white arrow. Now select any part of the red. Let's just use this hand over here because it's a good easy spot to select. So I'm gonna select that there. Now you can make sure that you've got the red selection by looking at your toolbar and you can see that full color over there is red or you can look in your swatches and it says full and it's a red. So it's the same red. So basically I'm gonna head up to my select menu, drop down to same, go across to full color and it selects everything that we presume is the same shade of red. Now this is where this wild green color comes in to really help us out and make sure that 
we have got one single shade of red because what happens sometimes is some little shades left in there from our crack team of designers and it throws us out when we come to print our film because we ended up with more film wasted than we, what we should have so I am now going to click on our green and you can see there's a little surprise that they've left us. So what we've got to do is we have to now keep that direct selection tool selected, just select anywhere it's in that red shade and do the exact same process. Go select, same and full color. So it selects all that funny shade that they left us and I'm going to make that green. So now you can see everything that we wanted red is now green. So that's exactly what we want. So now I'm going to go select my green and do the exact same process again, same and full color. And I can change everything to our red. So now we've got one single shade of red. Now we're gonna repeat the same process with the gray and the black. So I'm simply just gonna go select any part of the gray, head on up to select, drop down to same, and go fill color. Let's make this green again so you can make sure that everything's green there. Now sometimes what happens is you can't really see with everything selected. And a quick way around this is just to go Command H, it hides all the lines where it keeps everything selected, just to save a little bit of time from deselecting and reselecting and deselecting and reselecting. It is still selected and I can see everything is green there. So now I'm just going to select the gray color and bam, there we go. So everything is right. Repeat that again with the black. So I'm just going to select any part of the black. Head on up to select, drop down to same, go across to silk and make that green. So everything there is good and green. So I'm happy with that. Now I can make it my black. So there we go. Now we have three solid colors that are going to print out on three separate films not with additional shades. What's next? Now for this design, we are going to need an underbase because we're going to be printing onto a darker garment. We're going to need something to make it pop off the shirt so it doesn't sink in or just become very dull. We're going to use that gray as an underbase. We're not going to put a separate wipe down, so we're just going to keep it same three color print. Let's head on over to our layer palette and go to our artwork layer. Click on that artwork layer and drag it down to this little icon over here so you see that little plus sign. Now I'm just going to drop it there and you can see what it does. It gives us a duplicate copy of our artwork layer. So let's first of all just hide our artwork layer and relabel this copy as a underbase. In an ideal world where our screen print presses all align perfectly, we could just simply take this artwork layer and turn it to green. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So basically, we have to add something called choke. This is where we shrink that underbase very slightly so that we don't get any of it peeking out from underneath the other print colors. Back to our design. I haven't got it loaded. Back over to our design and let's have a look at some of the surprises that crop up when we make this choke on our underbase. So if I just quickly select our whole underbase, I'm just going to select it over here to make sure I get everything. And I'm going to hit this unite button over here in our pathfinder. Now, if you watch the hand part over here and maybe a little bit of this inside part over here, you'll see something is going to pop up. So you can see our robot has grown an extra few fingers. If I just switch on my artwork layer and and put it above our underbase quick you'll see that this got some extra green bits that we do not want so we have to get rid of these extra green bits so basically let's just rewind a little bit <laughs> to avoid the problem with the extra limbs that we've got i'm just going to go into wireframe mode which is command y i'm going to zoom right in and get my direct selection tool and select these little elements that we do not want and delete them. So to select these elements, you can't select on the outside of the graphic. You have to select within the graphics. So what I'm talking about is we can't select in this area over here. We have to select in this area over here. So back into our wireframe mode, I'm just going to select this part that we do not want, delete that bit and this area over here, which I presume is this line here. Yep, it is. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to zip on over to my other side and do exactly the same. So delete this part over here and this area over there. So let's go come out of our wireframe mode, zoom out. And now I'm going to go back to our Unite Pathfinder by clicking on our graphic, hitting that Unite button. And now it should all be hunky dory. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. You can see there's nothing left there. If I just put my artwork above that one again, you can see it's not peeking out anywhere in the design, which is just what we want. So let's just switch off our artwork again and start dealing with this stroke choke. Let's start by selecting our underbase, which is this big green part here. I'm just going to make a copy of that. So I'm going to go Command C and then Command F to place a copy straight on top of what we have. So you can see I've got two copies here. Now what I'm going to do with our top copy, I am going to simply just 
make sure it's got no fill in it. So I'm going to make sure I fill a select at the top here and click on this little button here to take that fill out. I'm going to go to our stroke and I'm going to click on black. So what it's done, I'm just going to zoom in nice and close and you can see it's added a black stroke around everything. So this blue line here basically aligns with the green line underneath. So you can see there's no double layer line here. We have got one line. If you have a look at our stroke palette window over here, you can see it says one point. So technically it's half a point this way and half a point that way. You could change it to the inside of the stroke if you want to do by clicking this button here and it'll be one entire point to the inside, but that's not what we want. And let's just stick to what we know, which is this line here. And so what we can do once we've got our stroke added in, I'm just gonna head on up to our object window drop down to path go across to outline stroke and now it's actually outline that stroke so i've got two lines instead of that one single line that was in the middle what we've got to do is make sure that we've got our black selected hold shift and select the green on top of that now i'm going to go back to our magical pathfinder now i'm going to hold down the alt button while clicking on the minus button so i click on that and what you can see is completely minus off that inside there i'm now going to click expand and you can see it's completely choked out that bit there so now if we switch on our artwork i'm just going to put that underneath our underbase so you can actually see what's happening with that choke our artwork is peaking out by 0.5 of a point underneath our graphic and that's exactly what we want around our whole design so you can see it's peaking out and that is how we create our underbase are we finished yet we have no need for this big background layer this great gray layer over here anymore so let's just delete that i'm gonna unlock it and drag it down to the trash can and throw it away so now we just left with our underbase and our artwork so i'm just going to miraculously paste in some registration marks which is this over here number one we just have to make sure our registration marks are the registration color this will ensure that it prints on every single piece of film in the same place and we don't have to worry about it so we've got one at the top which is more or less center and we've got one at the bottom you basically need registration marks on the longest part of your design you can obviously make some registration marks that go to the left and the right and the center but for now let's just keep them straight in the center just two one up one down what we're going to do is we have to have a look at our separations to see how they look so if we click on this separations preview here if you can't find any of these windows just just head up to your window and you can see it says separations preview right there mine's just located over here at the moment so i am going to click on overprint preview and you can see that cmyk and all these spot colors are located over here so i'm just going to quickly switch off our cmyk and our wild green color that we've got there so you can see all these other colors have been knocked out by this green color that we've got at the top so basically what i could do is i have to go up to window go to attributes and set our green layer here to an overprint fill now if i select that as an overprint fill if i switch it off you can see that all our other layers are still there and aren't being knocked out by that wild green color but what we want this green color to be is actually the same color as that warm gray so we're going to use it as an underbase so i'm going to select our green color and i'm going to make it our underbase color so now it's exactly the same color and you can see it's disappeared from our overprint preview which is exactly what we want so now we can use that same underbase that green and it's got all that extra little line bit so when we actually print we will have not just that little inside bit there we will print all the way to the outside there as well as knocking it back around the rest of the design that we don't want it to be peeking under now what i like to do so i don't get confused when i go to press to watch layer is what layer is color and color is what layer and layer was what color i normally just get my text tool and let's just label each layer now i normally do them in the sequence i print so let's start off with gray make a duplicate of that and make it red and make a duplicate of that and make it black and what i'm going to do is i am going to make sure that this black color is the black color we're using and this red color is the red color we're using and this gray color is the gray color we're using because then it'll print on each individual sheet and we'll know exactly what they are i'm just going to tie it up there a bit because i like things nice and tidy the next thing we've got to do is print this out without the use of a rip and this is really really easy all we're going to do is go up to the file menu and drop down to print or if you're really quick with your fingers go command p so you can see in this top menu up here where it says printer i have got a dope postscript file selected i definitely don't have any of my rips selected i've just simply got an acrobat adobe 
PostScript file selected. For my printer, I've got a generic laser printer, which is this Lexmark CS820. You definitely know when to be printing with that printer. So this is definitely to prove that you do not need a rip. There's my rip down here. I'm just gonna select that Lexmark. I'm gonna head on over to my output on this little menu over here. And you can see where it says mode. I'm gonna change that from composite to separations. Now you can see it's highlighted here and all my process colors, my CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, black are deselected and my spot colors, my Pantone colors are selected. You can change these frequency and the angle over here, but since we're not really printing half tones, that doesn't really matter at this point. So I'm just gonna click save, save that file to my desktop and then head on over to my desktop. So this is our file right here. I'm just gonna open it with Adobe Acrobat. So I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna ask us to confirm some security. Are you sure that this file is from a trustworthy source and do you want to convert it? Well, I'm trustworthy, but I'm not too sure about this guy. So let's just click yes. So you can see we've got our black film, we've got our red film, and we've got our gray underbase film. Now, all we need to do is print this to our printer without the need of a rip, and we've got our films. So there we go, you do not need a rip to create your separations, however sometimes it does help speed things up and it comes in handy when you got half tones, although you don't really need a rip for half tones either, but it does make it a lot easier. This could be another video. Anyway, so what I've done, I have printed out our separations so you can actually see them. This is a miniaturized version of them. So we've got our underbase color, we've got our red here, and then we've got our black over there. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna upload this file. It's gonna be a little bit bigger than what this is here. And you guys can go ahead and print it if you've got a printer. And if you do print it, I definitely wanna see the pictures of it. So you better send me an email or send me something on social media so I can definitely see it because I wanna see it. Okay, so with that all said, if you wanna keep up to date with what's going on here at my t-shirt printers, just follow the links below. And don't forget about the cap competition, which the next set of entries start on Friday. I'll be announcing who's gone through to the final on Saturday. And with that said, if you've got any comments, leave them down below, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out of here.